Hello again, classy people. This is Josh the Top Hat Gamer, and this week I'm reviewing The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt. Last week I gave my first impressions, but now, many hours later, I'm ready to tackle this one in full. Let's jump straight in. The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt follows the exploits of Geralt of Rivia, a witcher searching for his former student and heir to the throne, Cirilla. Cirilla, better known as Ciri, is the latest in a line of beings born with elder blood, granting her special abilities that make her a target for the titular Wild Hunt, a horde of spectral warriors with their own plans for her. The main story of The Witcher 3 is serviceable, but the search for Ciri isn't overly interesting. Things certainly pick up in the later acts, but to its credit, the narrative is filled with interesting characters from start to finish. Despite Geralt's gravelly voice and stoic demeanor, he's not without his charm and he's the center of some of the more somber moments of the game. I was surprised to find out how much I actually liked him. While the main story does leave a little something to be desired, the game's writing shines in its numerous side quests and subplots. The game deals with some pretty heavy subject matter and creates some really memorable stories within the interesting and fully realized world in which the game is set. Speaking of the game's world, it looks stunning from its foul swamps and verdant plains to its snow-capped peaks and dark caverns. Additionally, the monster designs you'll come across are mostly horrific as well as imaginative. We're also presented with some beautiful animated illustrations to recap the main plot and provide endings to subplots, and these all look very nice as well. While The Witcher 3 is a sight to see, it's not without some issues, as the game is plagued by severe and constant texture pop-in, as well as cutscenes that are prone to heavy stuttering. And then there are bugs that are just weird, like handstanding corpses or floating NPCs. The sound design is actually the strongest aspect of The Witcher 3's presentation in my mind. Its solid voice acting makes the countless scenes of dialogue actually interesting, and its score is most memorable when the action picks up and you're fighting for your life against fantastic beasts or packs of bandits. The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt's gameplay is mostly challenging and fun, rewarding players who take a calculated approach and prepare for their battles. The core combat mechanics put a focus on well-timed parries, dodges, and counterattacks, which feel good for the most part, though its dodge rolls don't feel as effective as they should. There are a few flashback sequences in which you get to play as Ciri, and these sections are a little more fast-paced and action-focused. As Geralt, you're given plenty of tools and magic signs to help you deal with any situation, so part of the fun is learning what works well against certain enemies. In fact, what I'd say the game does best is making you feel like an actual witcher, and by that I mean Geralt's role as a hunter and slayer of monsters is fleshed out surprisingly well. The game is at its finest when you're taking a witcher contract, haggling for an agreed reward, investigating sites of monster attacks, tracking your prey, and then finally dispatching the beast is a great deal of fun. My favorite aspect of this is being able to research the various monsters you'll come across in the game's bestiary, which would just be useless information in most games. Not here though. Here you'll learn plenty of useful ways to take down your opponents, including what bombs, sword oils, and signs work best against them. Speaking of bombs and sword oils, the game features an alchemy system that allows players to craft assorted gear to help them with their endeavors. You need to find the appropriate ingredients and recipes to make anything, but once it's made, it's yours. All it takes to refill your alchemy items is some meditation and hard alcohol, making acquiring these items the first time a challenge, but rewarding you for it by never making you create it again and these items could mean the difference between life and death. What works well on necrophages won't work on draconids, and none of your options for these creatures will work on human bandits. You're encouraged to research and learn what works against what, and the game gets progressively easier as you go. I really do appreciate The Witcher 3's focus on research and preparation more than anything else. This is a role-playing game, so of course you have some say on how Geralt plays, and the various skill points and mutagens you can apply to yourself are impressive to say the least. Hell, the game even allows you to organize your skills and mutagens to get the most out of matching skill bonuses, giving big boosts to attack power, overall vitality, and the intensity of your sign abilities. The way events play out is affected by the way you play as well. Plenty of games claim that your actions matter, but few deliver on that sentiment the way The Witcher 3 does. For instance, when trying to track down a criminal boss in Novigrad, Geralt had to investigate one of the criminal's rackets, the casino. When trying to gain entrance, a fight broke out, resulting in the death of his men. Later on, when trying to gain access to his hideout under false pretenses, one of the survivors from the casino fight recognized Geralt, resulting in a siege. There are even times when events in entirely different questlines start affecting other plot points. This game is enormous, and it's filled with side quests, witcher contracts, and hidden treasure to find, as well as unmarked quests, 
and a neat little card game called Gwent to play with various NPCs across the land. My first 12 hours were spent doing mostly side content. To be entirely honest, I'm not sure how long I actually played the game. With that said, however, a lot of my time was probably spent traversing the game world with a horse that handles incredibly poorly. Sometimes it takes forever to get anywhere with this mode of transport. While the game is bug-ridden and its main plot leaves a little something to be desired, The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt is a huge game that rewards players who plan ahead and do their research. It features a cast of mostly well-written characters and the world in which the game is set is fully realized and interesting. Its core combat gameplay feels good aside from the iffy dodging, and the crafting and RPG elements work well with the game's focus on preparation. The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt gets the Top Hat Gamer rating of excellent. I tossed up for a while trying to come to a verdict on this one, what with its soft and severe bugs and so-so main plot, but the good far outweighs the bad, as The Witcher 3 provides a fun experience as well as a ridiculous value for money. Fans of the series and newcomers alike should find something to enjoy here. Thanks for watching. I hope you found the review informative and stuff. If you missed the last review on Wolfenstein the Old Blood, click the annotation. Now if you'll excuse me, I've got some monsters to hunt.